Hello guys, tonight I'm going to show you how to prepare my peritoneal dialysis machine um, for tonight's use. I'm going to show you step by step because um, this machine has to be dealt with um, really strict hygiene and I'll be showing you how and when we should be washing our hands. I'll start by cleaning my spot. I already cleaned it but I used it to put all my bandages and everything so I just use it by cleaning with the methylated spirit that I have here. It's a spray and I just use a clean paper towel. So spray it like so. The machine I have already cleaned earlier, I haven't touched it since, but the table I have used it. Um, so I'm just, this is where all our solution is going to be placed. So that's why it has to be clean. Oh, sorry. Uh, so when you prepare this peritoneal dialysis, make sure you have enough lighting in the place so you know and um, can see, because it's quite risky on what you touch. And so everything that all your connections and all that might touch, just try and wipe it with the alcohol, just the methylated spirit. Um, also, I have here ready for me. It's quite distance from my table. I have a bin there far away. If I take the bag out with a bit of liquid and condensation in it, then I don't splash it by accident through my um, connections. So tonight I will be using three bags. Um, I started off two bags, but recently I have retained extra water. So the hospital has suggested that I should use this stronger solution just so it will take some more of the um, water that I have retained. Since I have retained some water, I have been feeling a little sick and a little bit shortness of breath and my weight has gained extra higher. And so with the PD, um, I'll explain that in my other video um, about dry weight and you know, you very much have to maintain your weight and your blood pressure for this and you have to check them every day. But today I'm just going to show you how to connect it. But anyway, I will start with the solution that I'm going to use tonight. Um, I already washed my hands earlier for one minute with antibacterial soap. So we scrub them very much and rinse it well and dry it with the clean paper towel. And then, um, so now my hands are clean. Now since it's clean, I'm just going to use my antibacterial gel that the hospital provided for me. But I put everything there away from where I prepare just so in case I splash or what I do and whatnot. So I have them on a separate area here. So I'm just going to sanitize my hand and grab my bags. So that sanitizer is dry now, I'm gonna go and grab the bags. Hi, my audio cut out, so let me explain. This is the six liter bag solution that goes on top of the machine. Just make sure you uncrease it, ready for opening. It's quite heavy, so just flatten it out, grab the other one. That one is the three liters one. Uh, with the use of these bags, normally you get prescribed at the hospital before they release you out. Here's the extra bag that was given to me just a couple of days ago. So I'll just take it on the table. Before I start, I'm just gonna sanitize my hand again. It's probably not suggested, but for me, every time I touch things, I just sanitize just to make sure that if I go back there and touch something else that they're still pretty hygienic. So I'm just gonna put my mask on. This has been sanitized um, after I used it this morning, so they're already dry for tonight. The mask is not really required, but I'm worried that my breathing could go while I'm connecting or whatnot, because I know this thing is very, very strict with hygiene. So I'm, I've seen some tutorials and all that they use masks, so I thought, Probably is a good idea just to avoid all those little particles falling off the, um, the connection when you put it on. So I'm just going to put this on uh, as I work. Alright, so I think I got everything. I got here on that side that I'm not going to touch now, but I put them in place where, so it's away from my things that I'm going to use for tonight. I got all my paperwork there, my instructions and there in case I get stuck. But very much now I've been using the dialysis for about a year I'd say, or more than a year. But prior to that, I've been on hemodialysis, which was um, a different sort of treatment where I have to go to the hospital three times a week, get it done there. And an absolute different, um, the blood actually get cleaned through to the machine and that one is more complicated so it has to be dealt with uh, with the uh, medical professionals. Uh, with this one we have been trained to do it safely and all that so very much I got all 
if you go to the hospital, whichever country you are, they will be providing a whole lot of information for you to do. And normally before they send you home, you will be trained and be educated really well before because this is this thing is very objectively it's a big thing. Just check everything I got. I got my instructions there on how to prepare, which I said I kind of know already. Um, I got my chart there where I record my daily. So once I've started and I have just sanitized my hand, I try to avoid not to touch anything else. And if I do, I make sure I have washed or I have sanitized really well. So I think pretty much I got everything. So I got my cassette here that I'm going to be using tonight. So um, if you're new to this, there's a green oxygen tubing. This is the green oxygen tubing down here. When I was sort of new to this, I don't know if I need a bathroom next to my room, but it is handy guys if you do have it. If you have a bathroom next door because you would need to drain this machine out when, when this machine starts to do the cycle of refilling and draining you would need a drain line that goes into the into your shower drain um so it's that's pr probably preferably because it would be less job for you i can show you my idea when i was in that situation where you can actually get a um, clean container and then you, s you just put a hole in it and i will include that on my video I'm gonna start by turning the machine on. It's at the back of the machine here. Now the machine says, put your weight in. And that, that is very much your weight that you, your dry weight. That's the weight that you took when you wake up early in the morning without drinking anything or without any, eating anything yet. And that's when your machine ended its therapy. So that's the way that you normally put in your chart. So I'll have a look on mine. So I'll put my weight in. So what you do first is make the zero blink by pressing the arrow. And then you find the weight. It's already on that weight, which is 54. Yes. The point. Yeah, we got the eight. And confirm on the arrow. Move down blood pressure that's also the blood pressure that you took early in the morning the same thing after your therapy my blood pressure has been low lately it's because obviously the water has been drained out with this new um, solution that the hospital gave me so now after the weight and the blood pressure has been put in you just press stop then guys the machine will prompt you what to do next it will tell you to um, press start and then we can put our cassette so that's the alarm but after i press stop i'm going to the bathroom and wash my hand for one minute and scrub it really well I now have washed my hands really well guys, but um, just to make sure that when you're in the sink while washing your hands, that your hands doesn't touch any part of the sink at all because your hand has to stay really, really clean. Make sure that the making it really dry. And for this process of washing, it has to be the antibacterial soap that you use. Alright, now that's dry and it's not going to drip anywhere. Make sure that it's dry. And just fluff that off in case there's some fluff from the paper towel. Um, now from here, it says press, press go to start. So I'm just going to... Now if you wish, also you can sanitize before you touch, but... I already washed. I'm not gonna touch the most sensitive part of the bag yet. So when you connect, that's when it's really dangerous. Anything that is hygienic, and they will be explaining to you in the hospital before you get out what part of this machine or what part of the bags are really, really um, strictly hygienic. So I'm just going to press the go here. Um, so now it's ready to load the set, which is the cassette. Uh, you should just listen to that little click, and then you can open the window. Yep, I heard it. I'm going to sanitize my hand. I'm just sanitizing my hand away from the machine, guys, because 
the machine is open at the moment and it's really sensitive. So make sure you don't get anything in that machine at all. Or don't touch it. Just make sure that they're really dry and they're not going to drip into your cassette. Because this cassette is also has to be hygienic. So clean, but has to be germ-free high, with hygiene. Very hygienic. So you're not allowed to touch anywhere at all. So I'm going to open this now. So that part there that's facing away from me, guys, is the part of the part of the cassette that is really, really sensitive. That has to be stay clean. Make sure it's all in place. Push it in. Close tight. Now with this, you grab it right at the tip and try not to use touch a lot. And so there it is. It clips in into the door of the machine. So the end of this machine, they're all very, very um, sensitive. The germs or particles. So they have to be very, very clean. I'm not gonna try and touch the top bit, guys. Just be very careful, but there it is. Now, just gonna unclip that and throw that piece away. I'm just try and untangle this thing. There it is. I wish I have someone videoing me so they can actually close up on what I do here closer. Now you put all the clips on. This one, two, three. Five. And there are six clamps that you need to close. And also with this, with the um, this extra, the short drain line here down below, I noticed that it's easier to actually twist the lock. Like when it's facing down that way, it's better to let it face the other way. Just so when later on you try to get your sample, it's easier to open then. So make sure you just give about that much space, not too close to the tip just so you got a um, space to hold on and so it's safer that way because this and anything that's are sealed here these um they are they have to be hygienic so you're not allowed to touch them at all no matter with clean hands or anything so try not to touch those things once you open them later so that's that so now i have closed six clamps two four five six i can now grab my green oxygen tube it's called oxygen tubing which is green and it has already been prepared earlier because i use this and replace it once a week that's what it looks like and the end of this goes to the drainage of my um of my shower or yeah of my shower the thing with this is uh, i can't really show you because you know but anyway so this is what you connect to the drain line the drain line is here right at the end the one to the right we remove the lid like so and just connect and then when you connect that, you just grab your sticky tape. Here in Australia, everything here is free for this. So the hospital supply is for us to for us to use. And so this sticky tape normally I use to secure also my ex extension line, which is the one on my body to connect to the machine. So I just secure it with that. Just so it doesn't come off when you start to move it around for your space to walk on or maybe get caught in the door you never know so it's already secure and you just uh the green tubing has also got its own clamp but i can't reach it i'll lift it any higher so you also unclamp your uh your oxygen tubing which is the drain line so i unclamp it and then you just press press it to open uh, where the marks were just to make sure that the water can flow freely later it doesn't get stuck so now it says load the set i'm going to press the green button now i don't know if you can see it from there but i'm going to press the green button it says please wait self-testing also guys when i do this i make sure all the windows are closed and um just so in case it's windy outside or any 
breeze coming through anywhere in the room. It's just safer not to let anything, any particle flying around if there's dust in the house and all that. So I normally just close the bathroom just for my own safety. The safety precautions that is also required. So just when you get all your information from the hospital, just try and follow very much everything because just this is for your own safety. So I'm just just some touch with my hand again because I ended up touching something. Um, it says now on the machine, connect bags, open the clamps. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to open the clamps and connect the bags. So I have here. Like so. Yeah, don't be scared, but I don't know in which country and what they use. Uh, but here, this 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 has been trained that we can use this because it says it should be safe. Because the bags, they're supposed to be um, pretty strong. But just try not to press too hard or poke too hard in it. And now I'm going to open the bags. I'm just going to sanitize my hands a little more. First. So this has actually some condensation guys and it's wet so just be very careful it doesn't drop anywhere in this um, hygienic part of the machine and, and your um, the ends of the tube. like a um, tight shirt just so it doesn't keep flapping or touch anything with this but I think I will have to tie this in a minute before I start connecting just um, yeah you're not supposed to touch anywhere at the tip of this tubes at all so just carefully not spill any water so like when I started this machine guys, everything worries me every little bit just since because we can breathe that everything has to be hygienic. So anything that worries you guys, this I'm explaining this water like stuff that before I couldn't find any answer when I searched up. So that's normal for the solution to have them. Um, some water outside for because they get in the freezer, the fridge obviously. So they when they get to your house, they stay outside the fridge or the cooler. And so that's why they have this um, condensation happening inside the bag. So they're slightly wet. Just be careful with that. Be very careful. Now, I think my hands still pretty clean. I'm going to, I'm going to get a um, paper towel just to dry the bags clean. Well, I got about two of those thick paper, strong thick paper towels. I noticed these paper towels are actually when you buy. I noticed that I got some cheaper ones. What I realized, especially the recycled ones, they're very, very powdery, guys. Don't try not to get those. Try and get the thick and strong one if you can. I know they're quite expensive, but this is, it has to be safe. So uh, with those little particles sticking on your hands and all that, it's, it's quite annoying, really. So I, I'd rather just spend a bit more just for, for the safety. So I'm just going to dry around the bags just gently. So you do the the top of the bags and try not to be careful you don't touch the the cover of the, the bag, the where, where the, the ends of it. Because that's where we're going to connect later and they have to stay hygienic, I mean I should say. So I just make sure everything's dry. So I'm just drying them top and underneath. Top and underneath. Just straighten it up. It's actually quite difficult when I first started because I'm actually so skinny since I have been sick for so many years. 
and I'm quite weak since you know I've been in the hospital with so many operations my kidney failed just to so the hospital tried to fix me very much to get ready for my transplant that might be coming but I'm going to be talking about my transplant at the moment I'm I'm already on the speedy but I'm already also done most of my tests to qualify for the transplant list so I am now on the list which is activated which I'm so glad and later I'll be talking about what kind of testing extreme testing that you have to qualify and to do complete before you can actually be on the list because guys you have to be healthy before you can actually be on the list as a recipient to receive a donor so I'm just gonna dry dry this and dry the table and I'm gonna dry the bottom of this and dry the table Alright then. So now that's done. I'm not going to sanitize my hand. I'm sanitizing my hand because we are going to, I am going to, not we, I am, because I'm showing you. <laughs> I'm going to check the all the bags to make sure that they're not leaking. Because guys, the solution inside the bag and whether you have to connect the bag in the tube, they have to be really hygienic. So if there's any leaks, that is a risk. Um, so my hands are clean. I'm going to press on the bag and to make sure that there's no leak underneath or anywhere of the bag. So first I'm going to lift it up. No, they're very dry. That's the reason why we have to dry the bag, guys, so we can confirm whether there's any leaks. So that's pretty dry. I can lift those little ones, but this one here, there's a big one. I can't. So I'll check my big bag here that's on top of the machine. I'll lift it up from one end and the other end. It's going to be dry. So I just want to straighten that. Just so tonight I don't get an alarm if they get stuck. So they have to be in the proper position. Yep, that's nice and straight. It's sitting right there at the edge so the water can flow. What I'm going to do guys, after I check that it's not leaking, I'm going to sanitize my hand again and stretch all the ends of the bag. So those parts there we have to stretch, those two, like a like just like a pinch. Pull, pull slowly that you don't rip it. And the same with the other bags. So you just pull those two bits there. Oh, sorry, with a pinch, pinch. And then the same with the if, depending on how many bags you have. So just pull, pull. And that should um, make you flow throughout the night without any alarms, hopefully, and not water not getting blocked, blockage, or without any problem. Yeah. Where are we gonna connect it on the hose, the tubes? to go into the machine but before that after I sanitize my hand I'm going to grab the paper towel so paper towel stays clean as well to get in touch with the bag so guys as you can see I don't touch anything with my hand I use my elbows to open doors and so I don't let it touch anywhere when I touch my like my um, solution here I'm just going now to I'm going to now stretch it's quite wet guys so if your hand would be probably slippery from the sanitizer um it depends on what country you are in the beginning we we have been the hospital has been supplying us with the liquid sanitizer uh, but lately we've been giving the gel well there has been some changes with the stuff tape because i don't know what happened i think it's to do with the COVID since the the um, sanitizer has been on demand for other uses because of the COVID and we're getting the gel so it's quite slippery so that's why with a bit of water it makes it triggers the hand to be slippery so I'm just gonna dry this try and get them off the bag and dry it there it is it's dry so now after I dry it I'm just I'm gonna fluff up the tissue, just make sure there's no powder. I'm going to pull them out a little for the edge of the bag in the tube because that will prevent the flow from getting stuck later and the machine won't keep hustling you with the continuous alarms. There's something wet, I don't know, just to make sure that it's not leaking. But I think it's just the edge of the bag that's got some compensation water from. Yeah. It's just, it's just the, the bag, it's just the outside, so all that's wet. Now I'm going to stretch the other one, the last one. Okay, 
yes. This Baxter products are very, very good. Even the delivery people, the lovely people, um, especially the hospital that I've gone into to get it maintained and get me um, maintained as well with my health and my use of this machine. They're very, very compassionate people and um, it, it helps a lot, guys. Some kindness when you're sick, it goes a long way. But we also need to help ourselves. We just have to be strong as well and be accepting, like I said. I think that's number one that um, they're going to get you going, just accepting things as they are. And um, there's nothing that you can do really once your um, kidney or once your organs, I guess, start to um, <coughs> give up, I'd say, or fail. But um, anyway, I'm kind of huffing now because of the mask. <laughs> um, yeah, otherwise, some of the steps, normally I wouldn't use the mask. I probably just use it when I'm about to connect. But since I'm used, talking a lot, I have to use it. Alright guys, I have already done that step. Okay, now my machine says open clamps and connect bags. Yeah, that's good. But now I'm going to connect and I'm worried about this fluffing away when I have to reach over, see how I like that. It's kind of risky, so I don't know what to do with this. Maybe I'll tuck it in. <laughs> I look like a dad, but I'll tuck it in anyway. Excuse me. <laughs> All right now guys, I'm going to now, uh, after you've done all that with the bags, before you connect, you have, you have I have to check the, the solution is clear. So by looking at that, you, you would eventually find out whether it's clear or there's something wrong with it. But on my baseline, what my, the nurse told me, I'm kind of confused because sometimes, you know, with the lighting and that, they all look different. But um, if she said, if you can see the bottom, of the other the end of the bag then that should be fine so for my case here i can see like this bubbles underneath the the same with this one like the circle i can see right on the bottom and with this one the writing underneath that i can see so it, it is clear uh second i'm going to check the expiry date so they're all august 22 june 22 july 22. it only comes with a month and a year so that's 2020 2022 i mean and now it's only 2020 so it's pretty safe now we're also going to confirm our um the strength of the bag that we've been prescribed on so i'm just going to check for mine and the amount that we need to use. The first one I got the six, six liters, 2.5, three liters, 2.5, and the other one, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, once you get going, you get to swap around with your solution, what makes you feel good. If you put on weight, then you use a bit stronger. Normally, when you do this, guys, you have to really concentrate since, especially with the connecting. So when I connect later on, I don't think I'll be talking as much. Um, my weight's slightly over at the moment still because I had an emergency, family emergency just a week ago and somehow I missed out on one night dialysis and you know if you drag it on too long the solution in the stomach sometimes your body starts to absorb everything in and unfortunately for my case I had to do it. Um, I had to be at the emergency situation so I wasn't able to dialyze until the following morning and that's why I had to use this extra solution to pull all the water out in my system. Um, I'm going to sanitize my hand really well this time since I'm going to open all the tubes and connect them to the bag. And just guys, no touching anywhere, the ends of your bag or the ends of the tube. So, I actually got extra sanitizer. And this is a um, medical grade one which the hospital gave you. So if you decide to buy one, if you run out, if you want to buy from the chemist, just make sure you ask them it's um, medical grade. So it's so sticky, this gel. I wish I had that, um, the liquid one. But then again, we are in pandemic, guys, and there's a lot of people that needing new stuff, I guess, as well. Normally with the liquid one, it doesn't take that much time to dry your hand. But with this, it's so slippery and you just can't risk it because the tube while you're holding it, it might slip and you might end up touching it. So I'll just make sure that it's really dry. Uh-oh, uh-oh. No, guys, I made a mistake, guess what? This, when I bend over, this will touch my thing. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, I'm sorry. I'm going to tap that in, and I hope my machine, I haven't done it this long. Normally, I go concentrate full on, and just bang, 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 connect, check, check, check. But because I'm talking, guys, I forgot to check this, the safety precautions and stuff. I'm just gonna sanitize again, because I touched my, my pajamas. Okay, extra, extra, extra. Really wet. Really wet. Now, okay, I'm going to start with the tube with the red clamp. The red clamp goes onto my bag that is on top of my machine. I'm going to do this. So what I'll do, I'll move this at the end here where the drain tube was. Just so it's away from the rest of them. So we don't touch them. I'll just turn it around. It seems to be... Okay. Now, 
it's a bit crooked and I don't know why. It's just hard to use it because it's already in the machine now. Okay, still sticky. Okay, now I'm going to do the red into the machine bag. Red clamp into the machine bag. I'm going to take the lid off of both and then connect them really quickly. Make sure that they're tight, they're in. So now I'm gonna do the white clamp. So I'm gonna use the white clamp, which is normally the twins. There's two of them, so you use one, the one that's closer to the right side. Here we go. your hand facing lower rather than up just so and hold it really tight so you don't touch the ends the bag's um, solution run through the machine so it goes through the tube that you just connected to the machine. Um, I'm now going to snap the, the green um, area here. And so when I say about snapping and letting the water flow, it, I was referring to this here. These two here they used to be connected so what you do is you snap it until you hear a click one direction and then slowly opposite direction nothing more than that guys just to as long as you get that space um, once that open it's good good enough so that's what I did the same thing with the other one on the top of the machine so that's been open let the water in and the same with this one here on the side of the machine so, just snap it and just sort of separate it so the water can go through. There you go. Okay. Usually I'll do the big one. It's always good to do the, the one from the top of the machine and then you go to your right. Right, all the green part has been snapped. Now we're going to open all the clamps. So I'll open the red clamp, slide it down, and just press the line where the two were still sort of sticking together from the clamp. So I'll open the white now. Just slide it slowly and press that tube again just so to open it. And just slide the blue one and do the same. Just press where the mark of the clamp. You can always leave your cleaning after, just so you don't have to touch anything. But I got them here. I only got a little space, but for you, I guess, guys, when you when you decide it later on, I think if you get a longer table to put your stuff in, so so you can prepare more, you get extra space, then it's probably better. But because my place is quite small, so I only try to minimize the space. So I'm going to also now undo the patient line that was sort of curling together. So I undo the white. Um, white tape line. Patient line, this is the patient line that's going to go connecting to you later on. So I'm going to do and unclamp my patient line and do the same. Press the where the clamp mark was 
and now I'm going to position for the level of the ending of the tube to the level of the line here. I'll put them in the photo or next to the video. So this on straight, it has to be straight just so you don't get bubbles on your tube later on when the machine starts to prime the water into the tubes. So anyway, so after you have connected all that and, and clamped them to open, just make sure that all the clamps from your bags are open and that the water can flow when the machine tries to prime all the lines. So, so what should be open earlier was everything that is connected to the bags only and, and the patient line when you prime the machine and your tube as well, the green tube, wasn't it? So I'll just make sure that my bag is sitting on the bottom of the heater bag where it's less like there's a circle there to heat up your bag so make sure the bag usually it sits there but that's just the procedure that you're supposed to be checking so and i just just swapped out to try and fill my water it's already warming up so it is working and uh, my red clamp is connected to the one on the top of the machine the bag on top of the machine and my white clamp is connected to the one on the side of my machine the one that i usually use and the blue clamp goes to the Icodextrin, which is a um, different solution. Um, that's my extra one, basically. So now, and, and that's it, guys. And I normally just sort of check just for my own peace of mind that I have done everything. So I'm familiarized, familiar with my machine now, so I know which one's supposed to be open, which one's supposed to be closed, uh, what position they should be in and stuff. So I know very much. So what I normally do, like I just do a final check and then before I hit the go that so it's ready to be primed. So now everything is supposed to be how it's supposed to be, I mean. And so now I'm ready to press my go and the machine will start priming, meaning all the solution that I connected, it, the machine will try and fill them up for me ready to be used to connect to it. So I'm pressing go. Oh, but before you press go, guys, make sure that the sign says open clamps, connect bags. Because sometimes when you press load the set, um, you thought that you have pressed it. I had that mistake before that I have to pull everything out and change all over again because I forgot to check that it's actually safe to connect bags. Uh, so um, I press the go when I'm trying to after I connected my, my cassette tapes in there and then um, somehow it didn't work so that's why. So yeah, that's it guys. guys.